Well, let's go to questions. Coach, you look at, at Wade's numbers. He's been like maybe one of the best players in the country in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's, what have you seen as the differences? I mean, of course, last game, the, the fouls, but in, in some of these other games that he just can turn it on in the second half uh, like that. Maybe that we're behind every time at halftime. <laughs> Except LSU, right? We were down two at LSU against LSU. Yeah, I, I think um, one thing that I've been praising him for lately, I think he's ninth in SEC only competition in defensive rebounds. For sure, the he's almost doubled his mark as far as his career average. That's been a part of what's helped us defensively, not just him, all of our guards. But four has been very much a presence on the defensive glass. I think he's averaging four defensive rebounds per game in SEC play. It would be interesting to see how many of those come in the first half or second half. But I think he has a really good feel for time score momentum. And even though – Someone outside of our group may think he takes questionable shots at times. Our group has a really good feel for when he's going to shoot. Some of that is um, because we're so dependent upon him shooting. I also think that he's very unselfish. To be as talented as he is with the ball in his hand, for someone who has the ball in his hand an extraordinary amount of time, he really helps whoever it is. Like, I would say – does he have 10 turnovers in conference play? Not sure yet. I'll check that. It's probably in one of these things. He has 10 exactly. Mm -hmm. I, five of those turnovers aren't his. Five of those are he put it exactly where it needed to be for somebody to catch it, and they don't have to do anything but catch it and finish it. He does a really good job for being as talented as he is at being very unselfish. And I think he has a good vibe, particularly in the second half, time score momentum on when he needs to do whatever – gives us our best chance to win. I would defend him somewhat. I didn't take it the wrong way. I think at the beginning of a game, he is trying to figure out how he can help someone in hopes that towards the end of the game, that person might can help him, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you've had three, three tight games, two on the road. This opportunity you have in front of you with three home games, can you just kind of speak to it and, and what y'all have in front of you and make some hay? Sure. Um, this will be the first time that we've had a bye since we've been in the SEC. And honestly, Brent, I'm still trying to discern what is best uh, on how to handle – that going into next week. We haven't played back-to-back -back road games yet, and this will be our first time playing back-to-back -back home games. So we need to take care of today, take care of tomorrow. We need to take care of this week. Um, but I would say since we've been here, it's the longest span of time that we will have ever slept consecutive nights in our own bed, and at my age, I'm thankful. You would. I'm glad the students are back. I hope that that helps us in that those three games too. You alluded to that about how a dependent dog can be on Wade. So I wonder, do you look at it as a sign of growth that he was out of the game for most of that first half, and yet you had guys coming up and yeah, you know, I told him that uh, this this morning in shooting with Buzz, like. I'm 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 transparent with the team just like I am with you guys. I don't like playing without four on the floor. Uh not just on offense. I'm not saying he's like the best defender of all time, but he has such a high IQ 
we're playing him with those four team fouls. He hits that corner three at LSU with three and a half minutes left to go up three. And at that time, I still had two timeouts. And I almost called the timeout to take him out. And I still wouldn't do it. And he has 14 fouls. Or he has four personal fouls. Um, I was telling him this morning, I don't like it. But that's the longest stretch we have played without. It's the least number of minutes he's played since he was a freshman. And uh, this season, we've played multiple games without Henry, multiple games without Solo, multiple games uh, without Boots, the entire season without Jew. Like, we've adjusted but never had to adjust specific to four. That was the first time we were forced to do it. And Mo hit a big three. Uh, Andy hit two big threes. Jay hit a three over there on the other side of their basket. For us to be in the position that we were at halftime, considering he hadn't scored and considering he had played low minutes, I also think that Eli is um, gaining comfort in what we're trying to do on both sides. And even though this may not make sense, I think his teammates are gaining comfort that he has comfort. And this late in the year, if you can find a few minutes here or there with someone who hasn't been a heavy minute guy that can – help that's tremendous playing without Henry at Arkansas we can't absorb somebody else having a problem but solo plays 15 minutes and fouls out Wildens plays 15 minutes and fouls out and we're playing without Henry that's too much for any team to absorb but particularly us um I thought Henry was the MVP of the game not statistically but the 10 minutes he played allows us to have some level of maneuverability that's really important. If you could speak to Mizzou and what are some of the key factors to get a win against them? I think it's the most unique prep in the SEC. Um, Coach Gates plays atypical to SEC teams. I actually think he coaches atypical to SEC coaches. Uh, very, very successful last year. They're not doing all of the same things, but there's remnants of how they play. And it's different than any of the four teams that we've played thus far. And so I didn't want to overload our guys yesterday with too much new information but I'm about to have to give them probably more than I do one day before because it's they're so unique in how they play offensively. And then they also do specific things defensively that require your time. And I think that's probably not putting words in coach's mouth. Uh, we're great friends. But I think that's part of why they play the way that they do on both sides of the ball is because – if you're not careful, you'll spend all your time worrying about them instead of making sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. Okay. I guess that's it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.